how I have um, been able to create a three, what I call a four-day weekend or a three-day work week. Okay, and it didn't happen overnight, and some weeks I work more than that. But as a general rule, Monday and Friday, I don't work on anything but reading and studying the world. That's it. And writing, because I'm writing a book. So those are those days. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is when I have coaching calls and advisory meetings with my team. And that's it. Okay? And partly why that I always tell people, like, for entrepreneurs, there's no such thing as the weekend. Every day is either a Friday or a Monday. Think about it. Every day is either a Friday or a Monday. Like, what's your Friday? It could be a Thursday, depending on what's going on. Right? So... How do I manage my time? How does our team manage our time to get so much done and work on the right hard things? I call it the AEIOU time matrix. It is the first time I am teaching it, but it is not the first time that it's been proven. But I wanted to prove that it could work for two years before I taught it to you, right, Sarah? Like, I have been trying on this three-day work week for two years, and now that I feel like I can be an integrity talking about it, not just that I tried it for like a month and now I'm teaching it to you. Like, can it actually work? Okay. So here's how it works. So first, for your time spent to be right, you have to be honest where it's spent and where it's sucked in the foremost areas most important to us, which is our health, wealth, self, and relationships. These are the four areas of our life that run our life. It's like the quad of our life, you know? We can like, you ever play quad ball when you're in elementary school? It's like you're bouncing the ball over to the health corner or the wealth corner, which is making money or career or saving, right? And self is like all your personal development stuff that you're doing on yourself and like how you're growing yourself and then even your spirituality or your religion, right? Go into the self category. And then relationships are the relationships you have with other people, both professionally and personally. So when we are do, do looking at our time, I always look at it through the lens of these four areas that run our life because these are the areas that absolutely um, take up all the time, right? And under health includes sleep. You know, Steve Harvey was a client of mine. I'm the one that created his Act Like a Success brand. And he has this thing that he says that I totally disagree with because he's like, you know, we can sleep when we're dead. That's what he always says. You know, I only sleep three hours a night because every night, every time I don't have my eyes on the ball, someone can take it from you. That's a very like masculine approach to time management, but people love it because it's very aggressive, you know? And I look at health when it comes to sleep as like, especially now that I'm over 40, and I have to like think about, you know, menopause at some point is going to come around. Like I actually need more sleep. And I hate that because I'm like, oh, I want to do so much more. But that is what the season of my life is. Should I try to force only sleeping three hours a night like I could before? Or should I actually get the sleep I need and work around it? Right? So now that you know those are the four areas, I named it A-E-I-O-U because it fits so perfectly with the vowels, right? And how I want you to understand, have any of you ever taken any other productivity thing? You've heard of like the Eisenhower matrix where, you know, what's important versus what's urgent. Who has heard of that? Like what's important versus urgent? And have you ever heard of like the, what are $100 tasks, $10 tasks, $1,000 tasks? We do that in the Messenger Mastermind. I'll teach you how to like, add up how your time is spent, okay? I used to teach something similar to the Eisenhower um, matrix and I, I'm, I'm gonna delete it from my curriculum and replace it with this. And that is that you should only, you need to be working on the items that are most important and not get pulled away by things that are urgent, okay? That's the old way of thinking. And I took a step back from that and I was like, 
first of all, visionizers typically, we're really weird. We need structure and planning, but we're bad at structure and planning, and we actually do better when we have like a last minute thing to do. Who resonates with that? Okay, most are like this. So I'm like, so you're trying to tell visionizers not to work on things that are urgent when we are literally programmed to be like that. So we're always gonna feel like we're losers, right? So I started this experiment on myself and was like, what if I made urgency cool? What if I made urgency healthy? What if I made urgency make me feel like I was contributing and actually doing great work? What if I changed my relationship with urgency, right? And so I did it by creating only three days a week where I had to work with clients and work with my team. And that scared me because I used to think that even though I felt like I did a good job scaling my business, that the, they still needed me. I really believed that. And Sarah's like, hold my beer. <laughs> she's like, yeah, she's like, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take that on. I'll take that on. Let's, let's do it. So I said, I want to change my relationship with urgency. I don't want us to do launches like we were doing because I was getting exhausted and so was the team. And I was like, I want to create a way that gives me time to be creative, read more, write my books, blah, blah, blah. So we did this. Two years ago, we started it. And I can happily say we're still doing it and I haven't lost any money, which is very exciting. Um, so let's first talk about each of the AEIs used and I'll to explain more. So step one is that you make a list of everything in your business that you've been or are currently avoiding. Urgh. Things like maybe your taxes <laughs> or having um, that conversation with an accountant or like maybe it's even something you've been avoiding is that pain in your left shoulder that you still don't go to the doctor for. Because remember, it's through the four filters, health, wealth, self relationships what am i avoiding like even relationships are the relationships that you're avoiding a hard conversation avoiding a conversation that you need to repair right okay it's getting juicy right it's actually going to get fun i was like this is genius i need to write a book on this it's going to be so great it's going to be one of those like new york times bestsellers okay so that's what you're going to do and we have till what time? Till three? Okay, so, okay. But for hot seats, I'd rather be closer in section as it is. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Okay, so you guys got a feeling? You got a feeling that you know? Even if you chose one thing per category, health, wealth, self, relationships, what is one thing you're avoiding right now? Okay? Why don't we give them 30 seconds? to write a few things down, okay? So I'm gonna get you to, let you do that while I take a sip of my coffee. And I love how Charmaine said, can we start with E? You know what? Absolutely not. <laughs> that's why, that's why if you agree with me that doing the right hard things matters first and that will create flow for you, then you will actually look at the stuff that you're avoiding first. You will be brave and say, I can do it because it doesn't control me. I control it, right? The things that we are avoiding do not control us. We control it. Okay, I'm gonna move on. The next is the E though, Charmaine. You're getting what you want. <laughs> okay, and E is what, what, make a list of everything in your business right now that you are truly enjoying. What are you truly enjoying right now? And that's the wealth section of the four, right? So in health and in relationships and self, what are also things that you're really enjoying that you're actually doing to, and if, if, if you have nothing 
in one of the four categories, that's okay too, because that's a, that's, a, that's a big aha moment. Oh my gosh, I'm not enjoying any of this. So why are we doing it, right? There's probably something missing. Okay, so I'm gonna give you 30 seconds on this one. And take a piece of my coffee cake. All right, now, I, what's important? So this is how I de define important. Make a list of everything in your business that you have to do or is currently in flight. That's important. So for example, maybe you have a product you're gonna launch, you were gonna launch it in October, a program or a product in October. That's important. So it's like the launch of my program. That's important, right? Um, maybe it's you have somebody starting like a virtual assistant or whatever is starting on a certain day and you're like, I have to get them onboarded. That's important. For your health, you know, your yearly um, pap smear. That's important. Uh, for yourself, for you, maybe it's like you have a daily ritual like meditation. That's important to you, right? For your relationships, you have red line days. I call them red line days. So when my daughters were younger, people would say, how did you do it all? You're a corporate executive. You had two kids, all that. Well, first of all, I had some help, thank God, for my mother-in-law. She was really great, still is actually. And um, also, I had what I call red line days on my calendar when I was in the corporate world where during that time, nothing else could be on my calendar except for redlining. Redline meant I'm with my kids. So nothing could touch it. So for me, that's important, redline, okay? So you do it through the four areas because all four areas touch your business because it's still you. Time sucking, remember? It's where you're spending your time, okay? Next is opportunity. Fun one again, Charmaine. Enjoying an opportunity with two fun ones, right? So make a list of everything in your business, even if you haven't had a chance to pursue it yet, that could be a great opportunity. And I've actually given you some, right? When I gave you the brand predictions, when I gave you the recession proofing, there were ideas in there that are like opportunities you could take advantage of. Heck, you know, even joining the Messenger Mastermind could be an opportunity for you because it would be, you would be spending time, right? So whatever opportunities you're considering or you think, or like, hey, I want to I wanna create a new program because the I, the important is about you're currently doing. You actually have done it before. Opportunities you have not done it yet, right? And you're thinking about it. Maybe you're thinking about buying another property. Maybe you're thinking about um, trying a new wellness routine. Maybe you're thinking about, um, because you've been told like, hey, if I do this wellness routine, I'm gonna have all this energy for my business because I get very tired, I get tired quickly, and that's why I can't have the energy to run things, right? Maybe an opportunity you've been thinking about but you've been stalling, that could be under the A too, but it would be um, like, I should get, somebody to clean my toilets once a week because that was my biggest investment when I first started my business was like I hate cleaning toilets and I was like I dread it dread it dread. And I was like instead of dreading it how do I just pay for it and then the money will show to replace it it was something I totally thought I had my own Filipino mom and grandma in my head saying hey what's wrong with you you're lazy you're so lazy you can't clean your own toilet and I'm like I just don't want to look at it you know I'll wash the dishes but so for me it was like doing something like that all right, so here's the cool part. After you've done that, right, look at your AEIO, AEIO, right, and when you see, especially if you're avoiding an important, 
that those things in the avoiding and the important buckets are actually keeping you from the E and the O. Then you'll determine what's urgent and you'll actually do it. Instead of urgency being shameful or like making you look like you're unorganized, actually it is urgent for me to get my left shoulder looked at because I'm not able to, I mean, I left hander and I can't write and therefore it's getting in the way of me writing a blog post, right? Um, you know, it's, I've been avoiding having my taxes and I don't want to open my mail, but now my, now my, um, my fees are up to $1,000 and it's just going to get worse, right? And in other time management systems, the urgency comes from shame. Urgency comes from shame, that you're not good at it, that you're unorganized. And I'm like, no, that's not true. We are visionizers. What's urgent excites us. What's urgent motivates and inspires us. What's urgent, friends, is your values. Because that's what you actually respond to. And therefore, we're not going to shame our values either. We're just going to ask, do our values support the dreams that we said that we actually want? And that's how you live a values-driven life. You create time spent. Those are the things you focus on. And every week, you become a disciple of your dreams so that you can be a messenger to the people who need you. That's what I do. And yeah, I showed you this really cute framework and it's in a table and whatever. But really, what you need to do is say, I test you. Like, if you said I want to make $10,000 next month, for example, that's an urgent, let's say that's your urgent thing. I want to make $10,000 next month. A $10,000 additional dollars next month. If that's your urgent anchor, then look at how the A, the I, the E, and the O are getting in the way of it. So whatever your goal is, is the you. I want to release 10 pounds and feel stronger. That's your you. So what in the A, I, E, and O are getting in the way? Or supporting it, like the enjoying and the, and the opportunity part. What's supporting it? Not just getting in the way of it, but what's supporting it? Keep those. And the things that aren't, be brave enough to have hard conversations, even with yourself, <laughs> to detach yourself from them. Yeah? Let's go urgency. Who's on the urgent train with me? We're going to tell everybody. I don't care what you said about that urgent thing. Jen Kemp says it actually makes me stronger. It does, because we are built like that. And we have to stop fighting against what we're built like and instead working with it. And then being honest about what is getting in the way and then taking action on what will actually create momentum. Okay. So, in the A plus I grouping, they are not values driven, so you need to get qualified support in some kind of way. The E and the O's are values driven, so you want to pursue mastery in those areas. You want to get better at it. You, if you enjoy something, you want to do more of it, right? If there's an opportunity and you're really craving to try it on, you want to pursue mastery in it. You want to get some help or, you know, learn more and do more around it. And the you, as I said, what becomes urgent is now prioritized in relationship to being values driven and creating the purposeful life you want and a recession proof business that supports it. So therefore your relationship with urgency becomes healthy. Yeah. Okay, so let me just remind you, and Jerry Rice too, because he is the GOAT, okay? Values-driven decisions will get you everything you want. And if you want to be around somebody, I promise you that when I die, people are going to know me for that. Because it has been the game changer for me. It has changed everything. It has changed my team's lives. It's changed my, my, my kids' lives. Because I took this on and started leading and, and messaging myself from this angle. Um, you want to be honest with yourself, being in integrity with yourself and be leading yourself. 
focus on the right hard things using the AEIOU matrix. Um, be not afraid to fail fast. In fact, failing fast is better than failing slow. So you want to have velocity over perfection, even for you sages and creators and advocates and the rest of us, okay? Um, you want to focus on high return, low effort things, right? Um, you want to work with qualified advisors. You don't need help from everyone. You need help from the right people who deserve, who you are worthy of working with. And finally, you need to show up as a unique messenger. <laughs> That's how you beat anyone in the economy. Problem, any recession, any issue, the messenger will always win, right? What's that thing like the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? That's true, but you don't have to be annoying. You can be yourself, right? So with that said, <laughs> we kind of like velocity the AEIOU, but I'm excited to hear some live shares and then we're going to do a hot seat. And I also want to see the shares um, inside of the chat. So who would like to share verbally? Can we just lower my book away from my hand? No, go ahead. Okay, please. Oh my God, this is mind blowing. Totally mind blowing because I'm avoiding the avoiding with that makes Oh God, I'm avoiding the avoiding. I think it's my hand. I'm sorry, y'all. Um. But this helped to put a lot of different things into perspective for me as to why the urgent is not being as urgent as it should be because I'm stuck in the important stuff versus getting the help I need because I'm smart. I'm an advocate sage. I already know what to do. Like, I shouldn't need any help. I should, I should be able to do this all on my own. And I'm struggling. I'm done struggling. <laughs> So yeah, this was really helpful. Good. Awesome. Who else? That was one of the important sections keeping. Cool. Love this point. Discipline comes from Disciple, yeah, discipline and devoted to yourself and your values. Yes, 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 yes. The BCT, I'm telling you, play the game with yourself. Integrity will come because <laughs> it's going to be costly. Um, that's really good. Um, meanwhile, I'm still avoiding important things like invoicing. Oh, yeah, go collect your coins, girl. What's wrong with you? Let's go, Molly, go, go get your money. Go get your money, okay? In fact, you should hop off and go invoice people right now back to the right hard things. Get it. I mean, you are excused. <laughs> I told you I'll tell you the truth. I don't need you listening to me. I need you to go get your money. <laughs> okay. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Hi. Um, this um, really helps me zone in on my zone of genius because I think I've been getting stuck in this loop of like I should be able to do this I know how to organize why can't I organize myself why can't I just do all the things but that's not my zone of genius so let me outsource that to people who it really is their zone of genius so I think the whole concept of doing the right hard things I, I can't hear that enough. Like that just keeps really, really encouraging me that I'm still in my own way because I'm trying to do too much. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, thank you for sharing that. Does anybody else resonate with Nicole? I, I tell you, growing up, 
I don't know how many of you, I was, guys, I was leading huge teams. I was PMP certified, me, okay? I don't know how to do any of that anymore. I, no. I fired myself from being organized so I could focus on being a visionizer. And what's happening with your own business is you think you need to be what I call the mobilizer, which is what Sarah's role is. The mobilizer creates process and planning. We're no longer the mobilizer. We're not working for someone else now. We're working for us. So we have to stay in our lane and get that help. And then there's also a third role. I have this all in my book. I'm so excited. It's called the strategizer. And that's what I'm doing for you right now. I'm your strategizer. I'm helping you see what strategy could work the best for you as a visionizer so that you can be clearer in communicating to the mobilizers so that you're not disappointed when the VAs or the OBMs or the personal assistants or the executive assistants let you down because we haven't been able to communicate what's important and urgent and clear. And so I'm glad you can see that and you can play two roles. When you're working with clients, you might be their strategizer or mobilizer or both. But when it's your business, you're the visionizer. And it's very hard to do stuff on your own. So thanks for being so transparent, Nicole. It helps you. so many people. All right, anybody else? I see Katerina and Sarah. Let's go with that. Hi, I just, I just had to share. Oh, I think the echo is giving us feedback. Is it still? Okay, I think it's fixed now. But I just had to share, like right now, um, as Nicole was speaking, I kind of had this breakthrough moment. Just, I don't know what it was that clicked it, but I really identify as someone who's very organized, very type A, I always have. But when you talk about visionizers, very much I'm in, I, I feel I fall into that category. And I kind of see myself as very generative and like just the ideas. I have so many ideas constantly and I do have to adjust the plans. and. I almost wonder if I've just put on this organized, like if I'm attached almost in an ego sense to the identity of being an organized person, like it's kind of blowing my mind. Cause since I was about five years old, if I done like people write, you're so organized, like, or they'll just, that's like my, one of my main compliments. They're like, I want to have my shit together like you do, but is that me? I don't know. Oh my God. It's so, this is so good. You, you, oh my God. Who's like, yes, you said the things that we're trying to say. I literally, I mean, for example, when people travel with me, they love traveling with me because I am the most organized traveler. We do the most fun things. I know how to save, but also splurge. I'm like super organized and in my house. I am very, um, now I don't organize my house, but at, before I fired myself, um, I was, and it is, it's an ego it's an ego attachment. And here's the thing, entrepreneurship and stepping truly into your visionizer requires many ego deaths. It requires many ego deaths because the things that we've been given compliments for might not match where we wanna go. And so I love that you said that because that is so true. It's still true. And also here's the reason you're holding on to it because you can control it. And then you can make excuses for why all your different ideas, you wanna run after them. And then, then you don't, you, you, you know, you water down the impact of doing one to two things really epically, scaling those things, and then you can go do more. So it allows us to let us, ourselves off the hook and give us another tri a trophy or triumph that doesn't serve our bigger future selves. So um, thank you. That is so, so good. So, so good. Thank you, Jen. I'm excited to mastermind with. I, Yay, I'm, you're joining? For sure. I'm happy. I'm excited. <laughs> thank oh, you. It's going to be you. so much fun. All right. One more, and then we have to take a break and then come back for a hot seat. But hi, Sarah. Hi there. Um, the bit that's really, really helped me over the last few days is that we've talked so much about Sage and Advocates. And I didn't realize how much they were in my way. Um, yeah, my first is, is Explorer and finding that balance I found really, really interestingly difficult because it just, yeah, I, was, I wasn't taking decisions, I was stuck. And now I kind of feel liberated just from the conversations we've had about Sage and Advocate. And that is going to indicate a new start for me from right now. So that's oh been gosh. super powerful. Thank you. 
Um, you know, I just want to say something to you because I have a feeling, I have an instinct inside of me that, um, you know, I just want you to hear this, that you're worthy of being wealthy. You're worthy of being extremely prosperous and that all your ideas are worth pursuing. Because Thanks, sages yeah. and advocates tend to even subconsciously not think that they're worthy of like the big things in life. And I want you to know that you absolutely are. Thank you. Thank wow, you. that's powerful. And it resonates. Thank you. Good.